I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Ah, good morning. Uh, this is uh, take two of this video. Uh, my first one sort of ended up as a disaster, or, well, I wouldn't quite say disaster, but uh, a little slow. Um, anyway, so I'm going to try to, I want to make this actually one part. Um, it turned out I ran out of time in the first one. So, I we ended last time talking about, we ended with an organizational grade, which was a multicellular diploid organism that produces haploid gametes. Okay, I mean, this is the condition we find in a, a lot, multiple taxa, especially in the protista, protoctista if you're a botanist, um, algae, these kinds of things. Uh, we see multicell, multicell, many cells, they tend to be diploid in that complex form, and they tend to produce haploid gametes, uh, well, gametes by definition are haploid. Um, and, but then the question is, is why what's the difference between a male and a female? Okay. In algae, a lot of them, there's no difference whatsoever. There is no male and female. Um, we see there there are types. Um, there's, you know, some of the yeasts in, in the fungi. You know, they, they have they have different reproductive types. Um, some of the algae, uh, Chlamydomonas is a great example. We have, it was called MT plus and MT minus, which are analogous to male and female, but they're not really that different. But why why male and female? What's the difference? I mean, obviously, when we're looking at complex things, mammals are a great example of that. You know, we know the difference. Um, you know, females, vagina. Uh, most of the reproductive system is internal, these kinds of things. Uh, males, penis, external uh, genitalia, then all the sec what they call secondary sexual characteristics of both male and female. But that's not really a good definition of male and female. Um, we know through, well, human modification of sexes that the two are kind of interchangeable in many ways. I mean, every single part of the female reproductive system is homologous to a portion of the male reproductive system. Um, ovaries are just testes. I mean, they're homologous to the testes. Um, the labia minor majora is the scrotum of a male. I mean, it's the same, developmentally, it's the same structures. Uh, we, you know, and we see that, that pattern. So that's not really a good, um, a good definition of male and female. What we see as a definition, what, what really makes male and female, and then this works across taxa when we get outside of mammals, um, is the fact that uh, males have sperm, females have eggs, we say duh, but we call that in biology, we call that anisogamy, okay? Isogamy is like I talked about in the beginning of this, this, this part, where you have gametes that are identical. You have haploid gametes, algae that produce two cells that are exactly the same, that come together, fuse sexual reproduction. They're identical. There's no sperm, there's no egg. Um, anisogamy is when you have sperm and egg. And what's the difference between the two? Um, well, eggs tend to be large. Eggs have the nucleus, nuclear DNA, the haploid chromosomes, but they also have mitochondria. Um, they have all of the other components of a cell, all of the all of the uh, other other organelles that cells have, that every other cell in your body has. Um, so they have they have you know they're they're basically a complete cell with just half the chromosome count. Um, in plants, they have chloroplasts. Um, the egg cells have chloroplasts in them, so they're actually able to, you know, photosynthesize. When we look at sperm, on the other hand, sperm, you know, everybody's familiar, sperm's a head and a little wiggly tail. But that head contains just the nuclear DNA. It's essentially naked DNA. Uh, with a couple of mitochondria that power the, the flagella of the tail to swim. So they don't have chloroplasts if it's a plant. They don't have mitochondria, or at least many mitochondria. They don't have extracellular fluid. Um, sperm tend to be very short-lived. Eggs exist for the lifetime of the female for the most part, um, at least in, in, in mammals, not, not in all things. Um, but they tend to be very, very long-lived. They're persistent. Um, they can't move. 
eggs tend to be immobile for the most part. They they don't have mechanisms for swimming because they've sacrificed that. Remember, it, everything's in life's a give and take. If you want to be able to swim, you need to be streamlined. Um, you need to have structures for swimming. You need to have structures for moving. Eggs sacrifice that by having, you know, sheep loads of, of support mechanisms. Okay? So anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to keep going on about that and again run out of time. So the question is, why would this evolve? Why would we see this? And we know from looking at the proteists, looking at the animal kingdom, fungi, plants, that this system has actually evolved multiple times, okay? We know that all things that with what we call sperm aren't sharing a common ancestor with sperm, okay, or eggs. Um, so this system has actually evolved. And w when we see something that repeatedly evolves in the animal or in the in the, in life, um, that lets us know that this is probably a winning strategy. I mean, there's a reason why that solution to the problem has been converged upon multiple times and um, in this case we look back we look back to things that are isogametic or close to isogametic and we look at what do they have in common um, what what issues do we find with those things that would make uh, true sperm and true eggs a possible solution and we find back to our friend chlamydomonas which is a photosynthetic algae we find that when they combine Remember the nucleus, they're haploid, haploid, they come together, they fuse, they exchange some genes here and there, there's some crossover. But remember, it's a full cell. So inside that cellular membrane, there's chloroplasts, um, there's all of the other organelles, there's mitochondria, okay? And mitochondria and chloroplasts each have their own DNA. Remember, they, they actually probably were separate organisms in the in deep time, distant past. So these things have their own DNA, which means that they want, they want to preserve that DNA. They want to replicate that DNA. Um, they don't want to compete. So just like separate infections, you know, if, you, if you're probably aware, if you, if you happen to get, like say you get a disease, uh, a viral disease or bacterial disease, and you get two different strains of it, the two strains actually are competing meaning both of them want to infect you, but they don't want to share your body with the other. Same thing happens with organelles. Same thing happens with chloroplasts. So when these chlamydomonas fuse, the, the, the nucleus is playing nice. The nucleus is, sit, you know, mixing, doing its thing. The chloroplasts and the mitochondria are actually battling it out. Ultimately, when that cell then separates back into its haploid phase again with an, a new individual, it's reproduced, it's going to have mitochondria and chloroplasts from one or the other parent, not both. Okay? Meaning that one set of nuclei, one set of chloroplasts and mitochondria killed off all of the others. Okay. So now, I'm, I'm, again, look, look at my time. Um, so I want to finish this up really quickly. So, one possible solution to that would be if you're going to be a cell and you're going to mix and you know your chloroplasts and mitochondria could potentially lose, could potentially be all devoured by your mates, um, chloroplasts and mitochondria, would be to produce a buttload of them. Make a huge number so that when you fuse, you're prepared. You've got tons of extras. That way, just a simple numbers game, you're going to win. They're going to lose, right? Um... So if that's going on, then there's another winning strategy you could pick. Um, obviously, you can only put reduce so much. Um, that what's it called? Uh, that arms race of making more than your competitor is kind of a losing strategy because once you get a big cell, it's not very mobile. Um, so another strategy would be get rid of your chloroplasts. Reduce your mitochondria to just the basic, absolute basic functions. Just strip down everything, okay? Carve it down to just the basics, and what do you have then? You've got a sperm. So you're not even playing the game. You're sc screw the game. Screw this trying to outcompete you for your um, extracellular DNA. I'm just gonna my nuclear DNA is all that really matters, and so I'm going to use that. 
Okay, that's it. I hope it makes sense.